Hello and welcome to the Energy Connect studio at Gastech 2025 in Milan. I'm delighted to have sitting next to me in the studio today, Bernhard Kudelka, Vice President, Carbon Capture and Storage at Shell. Bernhard, it's such a pleasure to have you with us at the studio. Thanks for having me, CS. And to start off, uh, could you share your thoughts on the evolution of the uh, carbon capture and storage uh, segment and uh, how do you see it progressing into the future? Sure, CS. So maybe just to remind ourselves, carbon capture and storage is a technology that's proven has been around for many years. It's actually a basket of technologies. So when you look at carbon capture, for example, AMAN based system have been around for 100 years. Storage, uh, the industry has basically injected CO2 into reservoirs since the 1970s for enhanced oil recovery purposes. And also CCS for carbon sequestration has been around for a long time. For example, the Shell operated Quest project will celebrate its 10th anniversary of operations later on this year. And very recently we see quite a bit of momentum in the CCS industry. So first of all, it's clear that CCS has a fundamental role to play in the energy transition and the debate in the public is aligning around that. And at the same time, you see the industry maturing, particularly in North America and in Europe. We'll see a number of final investment decisions over the last few years. But also, for example, our joint venture in Norway, Northern Lights, has just recently started up the first cryogenic value chain. So a lot of momentum and we're quite positive around the trajectory of CCS. Now, when you speak of that momentum, how do you see that expanding beyond the traditional, let's say, the, the abatement of the heavy industries and fossil fuels? Uh, and the scope for CCS into other sectors? Yeah, and a very good question. If you look at the, CC, the role CCS plays in the energy transition, there's probably three main areas where we think CCS is fundamental. The first one is there are certain industries where CO2 emissions don't stem from burning fossil fuels, but they are a product of chemical or production processes, like the cement industry, for example, or the lime industry, fertilizers, or for example, some, some processes in the steel industry. And for those industries, CCS is perhaps the only way to effectively decarbonize those industries at scale. So that's, that's item number one. Number two is that we have a very large industrial base that is currently installed. So to shift that industrial base to a new energy system will take time. And during that time, CCS can be a tool to decarbonize our current industrial base to help us deliver lower carbon products whilst retaining economic activity, retaining jobs in our current economic heartlands. And the third reason is that CCS is a building block. It's a building block for other energy solutions like blue hydrogen, for example, blue ammonia, but most importantly also for what is called carbon dioxide removal. So essentially taking carbon from the air and sequestering it. And when you think about an a, a energy or a carbon neutral energy system by 2050, you will still have carbon emissions. So CDR, so carbon dioxide removals, will help to balance the system and CCS can play a fundamental role in that. For example, think about direct air capture plus CCS or think about bioenergy plus CCS. So for all these reasons, you see the application of CCS is quite broad across many different industrial segments. Now, when you speak about like, for example, targets for 2050, and that requires an immense amount of scaling up. Yeah. Uh, where do you see the challenges and the sort of uh, logistical hurdles coming from when it comes to scaling up CCS? Indeed, to scale up CCS, we're still facing a value gap and often the lack of sufficient regulation. So what we need to scale up the industry, a number of key ingredients. So the first one is um, clear regulatory environment. So what I'm talking about is having very clear regulations around liability regimes or technical standards or having clarity of how to access licenses for geological storage. The second bit is we need to have a business model that works, that delivers sufficient returns for the investors in that value chain. And at the moment, you still see a gap, what CCS costs and what customers are able to afford at this point in time. So we need effective carbon pricing, we need more governmental support, especially for a nascent industry like CCS. And ultimately, we hope that also we, we are able to create more voluntary demand for lower carbon products as the industry matures. And that will help to close that value gap. The third element that we need to address is the nascency of the business. So at the moment, it's a new business and particular aggregation infrastructure for customers in the early stages of an industry is oversized. And that's where, again, government support, 
will be so important. And, and often, particularly when you talk about long pipelines across international borders, the natural ownership sometimes even sits with, with national governments. So their government support will be critical. So whilst we believe that CC has a fundamental role to play, there are quite a number of elements that we require regulators and governments to support in the short term to get this industry off the ground. Now Bernhard, you have a major portfolio under you for carbon capture. Uh, so how is Shell prioritizing its, uh, its strategy when it comes to CCS? Yeah. So Shell, of course, is a very significant investor in the energy transition. To date, Shell has about $20 billion of capital employed in lower carbon platforms. That includes low carbon fuels, CCS, hydrogen, power, just to name a few. And for CCS specifically, we have taken a number of significant investment decisions over the last year and a half. So for example, we, we did a large investment in Canada called Atlas Polaris. We've also just sanctioned an expansion of Northern Lights from one and a half million tons to over five million tons. So very significant investments. And also going forward, we intend to continue to invest in the energy transition. As Shella said, by 2030, we expected about 10% of our capital employed will be in lower carbon platforms. But of course, we will be very disciplined. We will look at areas where we can have a differentiated advantage, where we can use our differentiated skills to provide scalable and competitive platforms for our customers and for ourselves. And in that sense, I do think CCS has a, a good role to play, but we need to, of course, take account of the developing regulatory systems and business models to make sure that we drive profitability for us as an investor because it's absolutely critical in our mind that as an investor you need to have returns that are commensurate with the risk that you're taking. Only then the industry will really be able to scale to where it needs to scale and be a real contributor to a net zero energy system by 2050. Looking forward to that journey Bernard and it's been such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for coming down to the Energy Connect studio. Thanks for having me CS. Thank you. Thanks for watching and you can get comprehensive coverage of the energy industry at energyconnects.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media and I'll be back with more studio interviews from Gastech 2025 in Milan. Stay tuned.